Yes, that's the one I want. I'll wrap it for you. Thank you. I'll get your medicine, Mrs. Roberts. Oh, thank you. How much will it be, Mr. Brown? A shilling. Look out. Here she comes. Hello, Mrs. Prue. Well, my dear, here I am again. Hope I'm not too soon. No, it's just ready for you. Oh, that is nice. We were always so quick. Eight and six, please. Thank you. Thank you. What a nicely arranged counter this is, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? Thank you. I'll just get your medicines. <clears throat> That's a pretty box of soap, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? <laughs> Here we are. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. That'll be two and six, please. Thank you so much. Lovely weather, isn't it? Yes, lovely. The sun's so good for old people like me, you know. Puts new life into us. Here we are. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye bye. Well, what did she pinch this time? Bottle of midnight ecstasy. 27.6. I'll ring Miss Frost. Lovely. You ought to. Trouble I've taken with it. Here, get me some more hot water, will you? It's a good thing she ain't having no candles on it. It'd have to be three times as big. She heard you say that, you'd get your ear clipped. She'd have to catch me first. You'd best get on with your work. Mrs. Corr will find you where you will catch it. Well, it'd be nothing new. Maisie? Hello. Hello, what? Mum. I should think so, indeed. What are you wasting your time here for? Go and check the hall map. It should have been done hours ago. All right. All right, what? All right, Mum. Cheeky. Saucy little baggage that needs her bottom tanning. Mmm. You've done a nice job there, Hetty. No, good enough for an old mole buzz like her. Yeah, no picking. Mm, I like a bit of sugar. You look down today. What's the matter? I suppose you've forgotten what day tomorrow is. Tomorrow? Ten years since poor old Dan took the nine o'clock walk. So it is. <coughs> poor Dan. They didn't ought to have hanged him. If only he hadn't gone out that night after the Welbeck sparklers. He might have been with us now. We both told him to leave his gun behind. 
I could have got my hands on the wrath of the turned him in and have ripped his guts out. I bet you would. You was always the savage one. There. Nice surprise for T when she gets her present. <laughs> if she does get them. Dear, that's all. It's such a beautiful day. Did you go to any shops? Oh, yes, dear. I went to have my indigestion mixture made up. They made it up for me straight away. It was nice of them. They're always so obliging. I'm going upstairs now to take a dose. I've had a little pain across my left shoulder, and that always means I've eaten too quickly. I do eat quickly, you know. It seems something I can't help. It's a habit I cannot break myself of. It's not the only habit you can't break yourself of. What do you mean, dear? You know quite well what I mean. Did you get anything else besides your medicine? Anything else? Oh, no, dear. Where's your bag? My bag? Oh, I must have put it down somewhere. <laughs> Go and get it. Does it matter, dear? Very much. Go and get it. I don't expect it's very far away. Well, oh, dear. Here it is. Shut the door. I don't know how I came to leave it outside. Give it to me. Oh, really, dear? Give it to me. Nothing else, eh? It's a very pretty bottle. Did you pay for it? Oh, I'm sure I must have. The shop doesn't think you did. Oh, but I know I intended to. You're a wicked old woman, and I'm very angry with you. I shall return this to the shop, and if it happens again, I shall think seriously of sending you away altogether. Oh, after all, it was only a little bottle of scent. I see. I suppose a little bottle of scent may not seem much to one who used to run her own troop of shoplifters, but that's not the point. I spend my money giving you a good home for the sake of old times on condition that you behave yourselves and cut the old stuff out as I've done. Where would you be now? Where would you all be if it wasn't for me? One of these days, instead of ringing me up, the shops will send for the police and you'll go back to Clink and deserve to. I won't do it again. I won't really. I promise I won't. Something seems to come over me and I don't know what I'm doing. It's no good trying that stuff on me. You know perfectly well what you're doing. You're as artful as a wagon load of monkeys, and your old fingers are still as quick as lightning. Here's your bag. I shall stop a shilling a week out of your pocket money for a month to punish you. And you're not to go into any shops without my special permission. It's only a week since I had to pay for those stockings you took. Now, go to your room and think over your sins. I won't do it again. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. Oh, Mr. Brown, this is Miss Frost speaking. Yes. Yes, I found what you were asking me about. Take this back and get another one. Ah, oh, that's better. Mm -hmm. 
Knock before you come in. Knock me foot. Had quite a busy morning, haven't you? I wish you'd go away. I won't take a minute. I'll have this. No, you won't. Put it down. It's just what I want. Put it down. I'm sure she'll like it. I won't have you in my room again. Don't be absurd. I won't play patience with you anymore. Oh, yes, you will. You won two bob yesterday. <laughs> oh, oh, go away. This will do nicely. What are you giving her, dear? Go to the devil, both of you. I'll write her a nice little note. So shall I. Excuse me. Can you direct me to Eldon Road, please? Eldon Road. Yes, that's straight over the level crossing and the second on the right. Thanks very much. Uh, I'm looking for a house called Primrose Lodge. Oh, yes, that's the boarding house for old ladies. It's right at the end on the left. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Would you like to cut your cake, Miss Castle? Oh, yes. Pretty. Mm. May I open my presents first? Of course. But how charming. Thank you so much. Not at all. It's from Mrs. Judson. How good of her. And I got you this. I'm so sorry I didn't have time to wrap it up. Oh, thank you so much, Mrs. Prewell. It's wonderful. Oh, you've all been so good to me. Isn't it wonderful, Miss Frost? Yes. Very. Louisa, <coughs> you and I must have another little talk later on. Oh, dear. Had a postcard from Spike this morning. He always remembers my birthday. Oh, poor Spike. There wasn't another con man in the same street with him. He had the surest eye for a mug I've ever known. What a combination we made. My looks and his charm. But that ten-year stretch finished him. He never got over it. Yes, Maisie? The gent to see you, miss. Gent? What gent? Well, he wouldn't give his name. He sent this note and is waiting in the hall. Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Maisie. I'll see him in my room, if you ladies will forgive me. Yes, of course. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, my stick. Let me. There you are. Oh, 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 thank you. Oh, I hope there's nothing wrong. You never can pick up anything from her face. I saw her take a seven years sentence without batting an eyelid. <sighs> Sentences. Oh, hello, Mrs. Judson. Thank you so much for the book. I, I am looking forward to reading it. So glad you liked it. I thought you would when I first saw it. <laughs> Perhaps you'll lend it to me when you've finished with it. <laughs> so and so. Mr. Burling, ma'am. Hello, Butch. You're looking well. Retirement on the land seems to have agreed with you. Not Butch, Irma. Not. Irma Butch. George Burling now. Letitia Frost, darling. Sit down. Crofton Farm, West Selby, Wilts. And so Butch Barrett is now Farmer George Burling of Wiltshire, the honest countryman of the life. Have they made you a church warden? As a matter of fact, they have. I'm so glad. I always felt that was your ultimate destiny. Do you help to count the collection? I used to. Uh, Vicar does it himself now. I see. <laughs> And what has lured you away from the safety of Wiltshire? I've come to tell you something. Yes, George. What? Jean Hinton's out. Oh, yes. It's almost time, isn't it? I only heard a couple of days ago. She's been out a month. And the first thing she did when she got back 
was to ask after a certain person. Me? Yes. Thank you, Butch. That's where she's living. Thought you might like to know. Thank you. It's fine seeing you again, Irma. Letitia. We've had some times together, you and me. We have, George. You were wonderful. I often think of it now. Nothing too dangerous for you. Nerves of steel you had. Even the boys were scared of you. Do you remember that night you dodged the dicks but walking a six-inch girder, a hundred foot up, with 5,000 quid's worth of sparklers in your hands? I wasn't a cripple then. You haven't changed in spirit. I can see that. I shouldn't like to be in Jean Hinton's shoes if she tries any tricks on you. Perhaps she won't. Not if she's wise. If you ever want anything done, or organized, for the sake of old times, let me know. My phone number's on that paper I gave you. Thank you, George. And now, if you ring the bell, Maisie will bring you in some tea. Comfortable on else, this? Yes, I bought it three years ago. You bought it? To make a home for myself and some of my old friends who've fallen on lean times. By the way, you'd better keep an eye on your wallet while you're here. My wallet? It's gone. Has it? Who have you seen since you came in? Only the maid. And an old woman who came through the hall when I was waiting. She dropped a stick and I picked it up for her. You don't mean that she... I'm afraid so. She's over 80, but lifelong habits die hard, you know. Catching me, of all people. <laughs> the old... I'm afraid years of honesty have rather blunted you, George. Never mind. I'll get it back for you. After tea. <laughs> <laughs> Then that's settled. There's only one thing. Uh, can you get out there by the end of the month, Jack? Oh, yes, sir. I can manage that all right. Good. I can't thank you enough, sir. Or the board for giving me this wonderful chance. We think we've made the right choice. Now it's up to you to prove we have. I shall certainly do my best, sir. Well, what about your girl? Uh, what's her name? Frida. You're going to marry her and take her with you? Well, that's the general idea, sir. We've got a whole fortnight ahead of us. That's newspaperman talk. Girls, as a rule, like more time than that to prepare for the great day. Oh, not Frida, sir. She's very sensible. Well, that's splendid. It's not as if she had any real ties. She's on her own. Oh, she's a painter. Really? What does she paint? Uh, well, she's a pre-impressionist, sir. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I think it means painting things before you see them. <laughs> I think. Yes. Yes, I, I do understand. At least I think I do. Well, what is it? Oh, it's the first split-second impression of a mountaintop. Oh, yes. Well, yes, of course. But, but where's the mountaintop? Oh, it's there, but you can't see it. No, the brain hasn't had time to sort out what it thinks it ought to see from what it actually does. Oh, well, that explains it, then. How very clever. Well, it's called pre-impressionalism. It's what you see before you know what you're seeing. Oh, darling, go and see where that is. Hello, Western double five double three. Oh, hello, Jack. No, this is Joan. Just a minute. Hello, darling. Well, what's the matter? You're not ill or something, are you? No, I never felt better in my life. Now, listen, I've got some wonderful news. I can't tell you over the telephone, but I must see you tonight. You're not going out, are you? Of course not, if you're coming round. Yes, we'll be alone. Just you, me, and a couple of kippers. Hmm? Was that all right? Okay, darling. See you. I wonder what's happened to him. He says he's got some wonderful news. Well, I'd better go and do some shopping. Oh, Joan Gay, would you come and help me? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, I'd better ring Aunt Letty. I promise I'll go and see her this evening. Well, old dear, I'll be off. Oh, George, pass me the telephone, will you? Yo. Hello? Oh, hello, darling. 
I see. Yes, of course I understand. Give my love to Jack. Oh, I'm fine, absolutely fine. Yes. See you tomorrow. Bye. Well, George, thanks again for everything. Very friendly of you. Don't be daft. You thanking me? Don't forget. Any time. Wait. I'll have to get your wallet back. That's the least I can do. Oh, George, be a pal. Open that door for me. Thank you for the cells. I'll do it. Here's the cups. That's it. Thank you. Do you take sugar bunch? Yes. Come on, let's dance. This record's divine. Look out. When Jack came, you've got to clear out. Oh. Yours and yours. You can go and cuddle somewhere else. <laughs> no one else will have us. I'm not surprised. Come on, out you go. Are you sure Thanks. you wouldn't like us to stay? Outside. Oh, sorry about the washing up. We'll send it on, don't worry. See you tomorrow, Cheers. Jen. Thanks for the hospitality. <laughs> well, darling, for heaven's sake, turn that thing on. Oh, all right. Would you like a drink, sweetie? No, not yet. Let's, um, let's talk first. Oh, of course. Now, what's this wonderful news? They've made me assistant news editor on the Canadian Daily Post. What do you think about that? Darling, that's marvellous. You'll be chief editor in no time. Well, I wouldn't go as far as to say that, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they won't be out there by the end of the month, so we'll have to get married in a fortnight. No what? In a fortnight. Well, Sir Philip asked me if we could, and of course I said yes. Oh, did you now? Are you telling me you're prepared to take to the altar a girl dressed in a fortnight? You look just as lovely to me dressed in less than a fortnight. Well, let me tell you something. No, Frida, you're not going to back. <laughs> I'd marry you tomorrow if you asked me. <laughs> I don't know what Aunt Letty's going to say. Only last week she was saying she hoped we wouldn't get married in a hurry. But we can't let Aunt Letty stand in the way. She isn't even your real aunt. I mean, it's only a courtesy title. Isn't it? I know, darling. But when you think of all she's done for me. Ever since my parents went down in that boat when I was two, she's cared for me and provided for me. And she was just their best friend. I know she's been wonderful too. Even you? when she went away for a long time, for seven years, she left money for my school fees and for my training. I owe her a debt of gratitude. Well, it isn't as though she was hard up and couldn't be properly looked after. I mean, she's got the house and all her old friends around her. Look, I tell you what, let's take a run over there tonight and tell her. All right. How do you think she's going to take it? Oh, come on. Oh, Maisie, be at the end, post this letter right away for me. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, Letty. Frida, my dear. And Jack, too. What a lovely surprise. How are you? I'm very well. Oh, come sit down by the fire. Oh, allow me. Thank you. Well, I didn't expect to see you tonight, but it's very pleasant. Well, we just wanted to see you. That's right. Well, I can see you're both bursting with excitement, so perhaps one of you had better tell me what it's all about. Well, Jack's been offered a wonderful job in the new Canadian newspaper that's opening in Montreal. But that's splendid. Congratulations, Jack. Thank you. Shall I save your breath by guessing the rest? They want him out there as soon as possible, and you've got to get married right away. Is that it? In a fortnight. Why not? That's plenty of time. There, I told you so. But last week when I spoke to you, you were anxious for us not to hurry. Oh, I'm afraid I was just being selfish. But it's your happiness and Jack's that really matters. It's the idea of leaving you and going so far away. Oh, you mustn't worry about that. I shall be perfectly all right, so that's settled. 
Now, if you'll hand the drinks, darling, we'll celebrate the good news. My name is Miss Berry. I telephoned this morning about a room. Oh, yes. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Berry. Do come in. Thank you. Your room's quite ready. Uh, Maisie, this is Miss Berry. Afternoon, Miss. Take a bag up to a room for us. Yes, ma'am. If you come upstairs, Miss Berry, I'll show you your room. I'm sure you like it. I hope so. If I'm comfortable, I may stay indefinitely. How nice. Oh, dear. Oh, thank you, dear. As I was saying, Vicar, I should be only too charmed to do anything I can to help. Thank you. I was sure you would. <clears throat> I told my wife before I came out we could rely on Primrose Lodge. Always glad to help. You certainly are. And I still enjoy my Wednesday cup of tea in this quiet, congenial atmosphere. Here, you can't play that. Can't play what? You know quite well what I mean, that. Oh. Can't I? I didn't notice. No, but I did. Sweet, aren't they? Yes, aren't they? Now, now tell me, uh, what exactly is it you want me to do? Well, we hoped you'd again take charge of the lucky dip. You know, under your management last year, it took four times as much as it had ever done before. How very gratifying. <laughs> yes. You have, if I may say so, no financially green fingers. A natural genius for extracting money from even the most reluctant of pockets. Yes. She's always been able to do that. I'm sure she has. A very happy thought. Well, now, my dear Miss Castle, if you're ready, perhaps we could get on and uh, see the plan for the stall. Yes, well, I'll put my hat and coat on and meet you in the hall. Oh, Vicar, I have something for you. This is the small contribution I promised you for the Sunday school outing. My dear Miss Frost, you really are the most wonderful person. Good work seems to come naturally to you. I wish all my parishioners were like you. That might be a rash wish, Vicar. I take my chance on that. Oh, no, you don't. That's fitting. What? Take it back. All right. I'll play that one. Oh, no, you can't do that either. Now, oh, ladies, ladies, these little bickerings cannot possibly add to the enjoyment of the contest. She fiddled. I didn't. <laughs> now, 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 we must have no more quarreling, eh? You know the game will be far more pleasant if played in an atmosphere of tranquility. <laughs> King on the Queen. Thank you, Vicar. That's very good. Yes, well, now you're quits. I won! I'm not going to play with you again. Oh, no, come, come now. We mustn't mind losing sometimes. I don't mind losing, but I do not like being fiddled. Louisa. Oh, all right, then. She didn't fiddle. So what else she calls it, I don't know. What will the Vicar think of you? <laughs> well, we must all make allowances sometimes. Now, Mrs. Poole and Miss Burge, I'm sure you'll have another game tonight. Now, come along now. Kiss and be friends. I wouldn't kiss her for the five-pound note. Yes, I was speaking metaphorically. I am going to my room. I think you'd better. Now, Miss Birch, it is difficult for us who are so much younger to have patience with the little tantrums of the aged. But we must do our best, mustn't we? Poor old dear. Yes, we must. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> well, goodbye, Miss Frost, and thank you once again. Goodbye, Baker. Oh, would you mind opening that door for me before you go? Of course. I think I'll go for a walk. All this excitement, you know. Yes, of course. <laughs> and now remember, allowances for the old ones, eh? You can afford to. Yes, yes, you're quite right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, Vicar. Good afternoon, Mrs. Cockrell. This is our new guest, uh, Miss Berry, Mr. Porth, now Vicar. Oh, how do you do, Miss Berry? A new addition to this happy little fold. I hope you'll be very comfortable. Thank you. I hope so. I'm waiting for Miss Castle. Oh, I see. Uh, I'll show you the lounge, then I'll bring you some tea. Thank you. This way, please. This is the lounge. Oh, yes. We shall do our best to make you feel at home. Thank you. If you'll excuse me now. Certainly.
find me? Yes, I found you. Why are you in that thing? I was knocked down by a car. My back was hurt. They say I shan't walk again. Your back was hurt when you dropped over the prison wall. Lucky for you, your pals were waiting to get you away. You didn't stop to help the one behind you. It was each for herself. I know. That's why I'm here. You haven't altered much, have you, Jean? How did you find out where I was? Just luck. I had an anonymous tip-off. Did you? No doubt you've been thinking you were pretty safe, tucked away here under another name. But you must have known I'd get you, sooner or later. I suppose so. Nice, comfortable little hideout. Do yourself well, don't you? Pity, having it found out. <clears throat> there you are. Thank you. Just made. How much have you got sorted away? Not much. Don't give me that. I know better. It's true. There was that Notting Hill job. Worth quite a lot, that was. And the Grove Garden. The last one before they pulled you in. You must have got quite a slice out of that. How much? That's my business. The business has been enlarged. You've got a partner. It'll be company for you. Think of all the talks we can have about old times. I don't want to talk about old times. They've gone. It won't do you any harm to be reminded. From now onwards, it's halves. So, you're putting the blank on me. Are you surprised? What did you expect? I could give the police a nice little bit of information. Not that they'd know the name of Frost. But there's another name they'd know, and be glad to hear it. Some time ago, I would have been a dangerous person to have tried that on. But I've changed since then. I'm not like I was. I'm very gentle and kind. Gentle and kind, my foot. The leopard can't change its spots. Now I come to think of it, I saw a woman in the hall. I couldn't help thinking I'd seen her before. Look here, what is this place? What do you mean? I don't know, there's, there's something queer about it. I don't believe it's a genuine boarding house. Who owns it? You? Yes. I own it. I see. I run it as a home of rest for some of my old friends who've fallen on bad times. Very charitable. Now we know where we stand. I'll be seeing a lot of you, Miss Frost. I enjoyed our little chat. It's going to look a treat. Mm, very nice. The only thing that gets up my nose is that old sour guts is going to have any of it. Only hope what she does have will choke her. Here, keep stirring this for me, Mill, will you? It's not eating that'll choke her. Two bottles of whiskey went up to her room this morning. <laughs> That's her bell. If she thinks I'm going to answer it, she'll find out she's wrong. Why is she here, anyway? She ain't one of us. We don't take real boarders. I'll tell you something. I was only doing what I was told to do. Told to do? Miss Frost told me if anyone named Berry phoned up, I was to give her a room. Here, I'm ready for that now. And I'll tell you something else, Hetty. I believe she's just waiting until all this is over. I came on her unaware the other night, and I haven't seen that look on her face since. Well, you know when. But it always meant danger. Maisie! <laughs> That's her again. Maisie! She can yell herself hoarse for all I care. Maisie! Where's that slut of a girl? What's she calling? Where's my tea? Oh, it's in there. I told you to bring it up to my room. Fine, oh, that's on. If you want it brought up special, you've got to wait till I've done all the handing round. My tea comes first, and I'm going to have it first. Oh, hello, Maisie. Afternoon, Miss. Hello. Where's my aunt? She's in her room, Miss. Would you like me to bring you some tea? Oh, I'd love some tea. All right, I'll bring it in. Get my tea first, do you hear? I could not be in the way you're shouting. If I have any more sauce from you, you'll get a week's notice. Oh, don't worry, Maisie. There's only one person in this house who can give you notice. What did you say? I said there's only one person in this house who can give anyone notice, and that's Miss Frost. Oh, it is, is it? 
We'll see about that. Sabrina. Oh, hello, Aunt Letty. Come in here. Saucy young madam. Good thing when she's out of the way. She's not the only one, I should think. Really, Aunt Letty, she's the limit. That slut of a maid's got to go. Maisie is not a slut. She's a kind-hearted, hard-working girl. You mind your own business. Now listen to me, Miss Berry. The way Aunt Letty let you speak to her is her business. But if I were in her place, you'd be out on the street before you knew how you got there. Oh, I should, should I? Well, just ask your Aunt Letty why I'm not out in the street and see if she tells you. Go on, ask her. Frida. Aunt Letty, indeed. What do you mean by that? Frida, please go. You've got a lot to do. Come back again early tomorrow morning. I hate leaving you like this. It's all right. Please do as I say. I'm sorry you had the journey for nothing. Oh, very well. You think I don't know? No. What? How old is she? Twenty-one? Good-looking fellow, Benny Harmon, wasn't he? You disappeared after he was shot in that gang fight. Two years, wasn't it, before you came back into the game again? Never fancied another man afterwards, did you? What do you want? I'll tell you what I want and what I'm going to get. I'm going up to my room to write out a little agreement, giving me a half share in this place. And I'm going to bring it down here after dinner for you to sign. I see. Or else? or else your daughter might get to know things that'd be a nasty shock to her, and to Mr. Jack Loring. Well, do you sign? Yes. I'll sign. Good. Always best to know when you're beaten. There you are, darling. Thank you. You don't mind about one or two of the girls and boys coming in for a last drink, do you? No, of course not. You look rather worried. What's the matter? Oh, it's Aunt Letty. I wish I knew what was happening. That woman gets worse and worse, and Aunt Letty just submits to it all. Well, perhaps she's got some sort of hole over her. Well, how could she have? I don't know. I nearly lost my temper this afternoon. She said something that... Well, she came into Aunt Letty's room and made a scene, and I said I didn't know how Aunt Letty put up with it. And she said, Aunt Letty, indeed. In a nasty, sneering sort of way. Poor Auntie looked most upset. i never seen her look like that before. And then she told me to go as quickly as possible. Never mind, darling. You'll soon be away from it all. Oh, that's what worries me, the idea of going away. Oh, I wish I knew what was happening. Don't let it worry you anymore. Frida, come on, let us in. Oh, come on, hurry up. Hello, Hello darling. Really come really in. Really You're the first to arrive. Hello, Mr. Bunch. Electric College to get here. Let me take your coat. Hello, Jack. Hello, Bunch. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, sweetie. Mm. Well, we brought you something that Bunch has made specially for you. She was too bashful to bring it by herself. Oh, how sweet of you. I thought you might like a nice piece of sculpture, wherever you're going to live. There. Oh. It's mother love. Oh, thank you, darling. Here you are. I've written it out twice. You sign one, I sign the other. I see. Half the money in the bank, too, eh? Taking your pound of flesh? So would you in my place. I suppose so. Here's the pen. Come on, you know the alternative. Suppose I let you take it. Don't try bluffing me. I reckon I'm being pretty reasonable. You know you give every penny you've got to keep that girl from knowing the truth. I suppose if I've got to, I've got to. I'll make the best of it. Hmm. That's the sensible way of looking at it. You've got me, Jean. Just where I want you. Very well.
There it is. Give me the pen. your half. Now, how about having a drink with me to celebrate the partnership? All right. Get me a glass from the sideboard. Nothing like a drop of whiskey? No. All the old folk has gone to bed, eh? Yes, there's no one up but you and me. Oh, the night's young. There's another bottle upstairs. Cheers, partner. Cheers, Jean. <sighs> well, now, we're all happy and comfortable. And just so as you can't pull any tricks, I'll tell you what else I've done. What else? I've written two letters, one to Scotland Yard and the other to Miss Frieda Maybury or Mrs. Jack Loring, as the case may be and I'm going to post them to a friend of mine in the morning. They're to be sent off if anything happens to me. I see. So, it'll be in your interest to keep me alive and well. My friend's going to telephone every Monday just to see that I'm all right. A very good idea. It draws your teeth all right. There's only one thing wrong with it. What's that? You should have done it before. It'll do now. It won't. Look at me, Jean. What for? I want to look at your eyes. Why? Yes. It's all right. Why, why are you looking at me like that? What's the matter, Jean? Oh, what have you done to me? If you don't sit down, you'll fall. That's right. You're a fool, Jean. You ought to have known me better. You've done, done me. Your whiskey. While your back was turned, getting the glass. No use trying to move. You can't. You thought you were being very clever. When you got that tip off where I was, booking a room under the name of Betty, and coming along here to take me by surprise. But you see, you didn't take me by surprise. I brought you here. You... You, you brought me. Yes. That tip-off came from me, and you fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. You walked right into it. I thought I'd rather have you here under my eye than going about looking for me. If you'd been sensible and not pushed me too far, you might have got away with it. But you signed your death warrant this afternoon when you threatened Frida. The partnership is dissolved. No one in this house will know what's happened. This is Bushy, 44681. I want West Selby, Wiltshire, 953. morning tea and found her things all gone and the bed hadn't been slept in. Then Miss Frost said that there'd been a telephone call last night about somebody being ill and she'd packed up at once. Then someone called for her in the car and took her off. Oh, 
she's gone. She's gone. Hooray! You and I aren't talkers, Hetty. You bet we're not. We just take things as they come. Doesn't do to talk or even think sometimes. I'll have another cup of tea. We both slept well last night. Didn't hear anything, did we? Not a thing. You know, she said a strange thing to me the other day. Oh, did she? What? She said if anything happened to her, she'd made all arrangements for you and me to carry on with this place. She said that? Yes. Mr. George Byrne of Crofton Farm, West Selby, Wiltshire, and a woman passenger were killed outright in a head-on collision with another car at half past ten last night. Yes, sir, head-on collision. No doubt both going too fast. One car turned right over. Man and woman killed. Driver of the other car taken to hospital, badly injured and concussion. Uh, yes, sir, the dead man was uh, George Burling, Crotton Farm, West Selby. I've checked up on him, sir, very respectable. Church warden at St. Cyprian's. Uh, no, sir, nothing whatever to show who the woman was. Well, medium height, late forties, dark hair. Well, Dr. Sporting will be over soon, sir, to make his report. I'll ring you back. Oh, very good, sir. He's the doctor now. Uh, goodbye, sir. Well, the chief constable will be over soon. Thinks you might get the council to widen their corner after this. Hello, Doc. Uh-huh. Just in time for a cover. Oh, joy, good. Get a drop of some tea, will you, George? Yes, sir. Cigarette? Uh, no, thanks. Well, we've checked up on Burling. Uh -huh. The owner of Crofton Farm, West Selby. Warden of the parish church. Highly respected. Oh, was he? Well, perhaps you'd like to do a bit more checking up. Well done. On how your highly respected church warden came to be driving about with a dead body at that time of night. Dead body? Yeah. That woman wasn't killed in the crash. She was dead when it happened. Was she now? Oh. I've been on to Dr. Feldman, the county pathologist. He'll be along at once. Probably want to open her up. Meanwhile, I should make a few more inquiries about Mr. George Burling, if I were you. I'll do that, all right. Well, that's your luck. No, thanks. Miss Freda Mybury? Yeah, that's us. Could you put me down here, please? Sign here, please. It's wonderful news, Aunt Letty, but what happened? She had a telephone call, packed up, and went straight off in a friend's car. Do you know where she's gone? I think so. Oh, but don't let's talk about her anymore. Come in. Miss, it's come. I just took it in. Oh, Miss, can I have just one little peep? You can come and help me try it on. Oh, Miss, may I? Thank you. <laughs> then I'm going to show it to the old dears in the lounge. My dear, it's oh. quite beautiful. Turn round. Oh, it's perfect. Doesn't she look lovely? Oh. <laughs> What's the matter? I can't help thinking of Paul Spike. Spike? Caroline. I'm sorry. My dear, we want you to accept this little wedding present from the four of us with our love and best wishes for your happiness. Oh, how sweet of you. Thank you very much. I must open it now. Oh, it's lovely. Look, Aunt Letty, isn't it lovely? Yes. Beautiful. Thank you all very much. Now, go and take that dress off and then come to my room. All right, I won't be long. Louisa? Yes, dear? Will you just push me to my room, please? Of course, dear. What's the matter with you? I might have worn a dress like that if Spike hadn't gone to clink. Oh, to blazes with Spike. Oh, oh sorry, dear, sorry. There, dear. Thank you. Louisa? Yes, dear? That was a very nice little present you gave to Frida. I'm so glad you liked it, dear. Where did you get it? Where did we get it? Oh, where was it now? Let me look. Oh, it's 
tubs and china. Here you are. Paid. You paid for it? Well, of course, dear. How else do you think we could have got it? That's what I was wondering. We've been saving up on the quiet ever since they were engaged, so as to have enough. My dear Louisa. <laughs> I see. Right. Thank you. Goodbye. It was murder, all right. There's no doubt about that. She had enough of the stuff inside her to kill two people. We sent their fingerprints along to the yard. Inspector Craven just had the results. Yes, George Burling was really Ned Barrett. And the Barrett gang was smashed ten years ago. The woman was Jean Hinton, who was released from prison two months back. Jean Hinton, sir? Wasn't she the woman in that escape business? Yes, that's right, with Irma Randall, one of the smartest jewel thieves in the business. Climb a wall like a cat. Now, she got away, but Hinton didn't, and got an extra sentence. Now, we know where she went when she was released, but three weeks ago she disappeared, and there hasn't been a sign of her since then. Looks as though she was trying to blackmail this fellow, Burling or Barrett, and that he arranged to meet her and then killed her, and was trying to do away with the body, probably going to bury it on the farm. Sounds all right. But what we've got to find out is where she spent the last three weeks. Thank you, Maisie. Here's mud in your eye. Say, dear, dear. Come on, you old battle axe. Louisa. I heard she's the voice of the turtle like Don't her. have any more champagne. Oh, but why not? I like it. It's lovely. You've had quite enough already. Oh, but it makes me feel so young. That's what I'm afraid of. No, no. Goodbye, darling. I'll write to you as soon as we get there. And thank you for everything. Goodbye, my dear. And may you always be happy. Say goodbye to everyone, darling. Be good there, Jack. Keep her close to you always. Whatever happens. I promise I will. I know how you've loved and cared for her all these years. I called in at the offices of the Green Funnel Line the other day and asked to see a list of the passengers on the Princess Delphine when she went down. The two names I was looking for weren't on the list. I'll take care of her. Come on, darling. Finish me off. Oh, they're coming. It's all the right. Here they come. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. Pawson to see you. Mr. Pawson? At this time? He says it's very important. Very well, show him in, of course. Thank you. Good morning, Vicar. This is an early call. Miss Frost, have you seen the paper? Not yet. Why? Then you don't know. No, what? About Miss Berry. Miss Berry? My dear Vicar, what are you talking about? Sit down. Thank you. Then you don't know that you've been harboring a criminal in this house. Criminal? Really, Vicar? Listen to this, Miss Frost. It has been established that the woman whose body was found in the wrecked car after the collision near Malmesbury last week did not die as a result of the accident, but had been poisoned several hours before. She has now been identified by her fingerprints as Jean Hinton, who had been released from Holloway Prison six weeks ago after serving a sentence of several years. Well? Well, the, there's, a, there's a photograph. Miss Hinton was, in fact, uh, Miss Berry. Really, Vicar, I don't believe that. There's the picture, see for yourself. Oh, I admit it's like her, but of course it's not the same woman. I don't agree with you, Miss Frost. I think it is the same. There are one or two other points. Other surprising facts have come to light. The owner of the car, George Burling of Crofton Farm, West Sultan, Wiltshire, who was killed outright in the crash, was in reality an ex-gang leader by the name of Butch Barrett. And both he and the dead woman, Hinton, had been associates of a notorious woman jewel thief by the name of Randall, who had escaped from prison five years ago and was never caught. The police think it is possible that after release, Jean Hinton might have made contact with Randall, 
And anyone who recognizes his photograph and remembers seeing her within the last weeks is asked to communicate at once with the police. Really, Miss Frost, even if you don't believe Miss Berry was the woman, I consider it your duty to inform the police. My dear vicar, I, I really don't want to be bothered with this at all. Even if Miss Berry was Jean Hinton, she's dead now. And it couldn't do any good letting the police know she's been staying here. It would only cause a lot of unpleasantness. But uh, someone is bound to tell them. I mean, she must have been seen about here. No, she never went out. I'm sorry, Miss Frost, to cause you any unpleasantness. But if you refuse to inform the police, I consider it my duty as vicar of this parish to do so myself. Why? Well, they want to know where she spent the last weeks. They think that she may have tried to make contact with... Miss Frost. Why did she come here, to this house? Was it to find... To find Irma Randall? You know, I never said Irma. That was a slip. A bad one. You... It was blackmail, I suppose. Yes. Well, what are you going to do? Nothing. Nothing. The next steps are up to you. I shall not take them. So far as I'm concerned, I shall seal this with a seal of confession. I realize, of course, that if nothing is said, you may escape the judgment of men. But there is another judgment, Miss Frost, that no one can escape. I leave you to act as your conscience dictates. Goodbye. Yes, yes, sir. There's a lady asking to see you, sir. Lady? Name of Frost. She's in a wheelchair. She says it's important. All right, show her in. All right, sir. Uh, the inspector will see you, madam. Good morning, madam. What can I do for you? I have something to tell you, inspector. 